first way I think you need to, Sheryl Sanders, lean into this world of hyperconnectivity is I think it's really important to always think like a new immigrant. How does a new immigrant think? New immigrant thinks, I just showed up here in San Francisco, and uh, there's no legacy spot waiting for me at uh, University of California, San Francisco, or San Francisco State, or Stanford University. I better figure out what's going on here, and I better pursue these opportunities more energetically, persistently, and creatively than anybody else. New immigrants, an Armenian friend taught me this, are paranoid optimists. Okay? They are optimists because they left somewhere worse and came to somewhere they thought was better, but they are always paranoid. They always think it can be taken away from them in a flash. Think like an immigrant, stay hungry. Because friends, I actually think we're all new immigrants to the hyper-connected world. Second, this is an idea I got from Larry Katz at Harvard. Always think like an artisan. How does the artisan think? Who was the artist? The artist was that person in the Middle Ages who made every item individual. This was before mass manufacturing. They made every saddle, every pair of shoes, every dress, every piece of jewelry, every plate, every utensil, every piece of furniture they made individual. And what did the best artisans do? They brought so much extra to their work. They took so much pride in it. They carved their initials into it. Do your job every day as if you brought so much extra to it, you want to carve your initials into it. Third, it's an idea I got from Reed Hoffman, who's going to be with us this afternoon. Always be in beta. Always in your mind. Be in that zone of beta. That moment when a piece of software, a piece of industry is about 80, 90% done, you throw it over the wall, you let the community find the holes, you throw it back, you fix it some more, throw it over the wall again. Reed likes to say in Silicon Valley there's only one four-letter word. Actually, it isn't a four-letter word, but it does start with F. And the word is finish. If you ever think you're finished, you're probably finished. <laughs> always think of yourself as a work in progress. Always think of yourself in beta. I think something Alvin Toffler, the futurist, said a long time ago is, is really true, that the new literacy is not reading and writing. It's the ability and desire to keep learning and relearning. Always be in beta. Fourth, something I wrote about recently is that, like it or not, in some ways I really don't like it. It's a 401k world we're living in. What the move from connected to hyperconnected did was shift us, shift the dial that we are now in a 401k world. What do I mean by that? We're really much more in a world less of defined benefits and more of defined contributions in whatever you do. This is a world that offers incredible, cheap, almost free opportunities for people to compete, connect, collaborate, and innovate. It enables it like never before, but to some degree it also requires it. That we're no longer in that world of defined benefits, not just in retirement, but just generally. We're in a world of defined contributions. And Marina is gonna talk about this a little later because there's something that happens when you shift from a world of defined benefits to defined contributions, and that is that the big divide is no longer just the digital divide. The digital divide is something that I think we all are pretty confident will be overcome by the diffusion of technology and broadband. And so when it's a defined contribution world, the real divide will be a motivational divide. Who has the motivation to take advantage of all of these tools that are now out there? That's going to be problematic something we're going to have to think about. Lastly, I like to say, we wrote this in our book, always think like a waitress at Perkins Pancake House in Minneapolis, my hometown, <laughs> off Highway 100 in France. That would be my favorite restaurant. <laughs> so I was at Perkins when I was writing the book, having breakfast with my best friend Ken Greer on a Sunday morning at 7 a.m. I ordered three scrambled eggs and uh, bacon. Ken ordered three scrambled eggs. I have three scrambled eggs and pancakes. I think he ordered three scrambled eggs and fruit. 
And after 15 minutes, the waitress came back. She put our two plates down. All she said to Ken was, I gave you extra fruit. That's all she said. We gave her a 50% tip. Why? Because that waitress didn't control much, but she controlled the fruit label. <laughs> and that was her source of extra. In her own little world, what was she doing? She was being entrepreneurial. What Paul Graham, the founder of Y Combinator, says, be, re be uh, relentless. Be relentlessly resourceful. I like to say be relentlessly entrepreneurial. Whatever you do, look where you can fork off here, add there, to start and find a new business or a new opportunity. So to me, those are the way I think about leaning into this world. I want America to be the place where everyone around the world says, I want to go there to launch my moonshot, to start something. Thank you very much.